morning, Lead Bullets for Life. Today we're going to get started on uh, reloading the uh, empty and cleaned out uh, 32 Smith & Wesson shorts. And um, we're going to go ahead and use uh, 1.4 grains of Red Dot by Alliant. And let's see if we can get that uh, charge to shoot about, you know, 650 in that area there. Versus that 1.7 grain which was like about um, 750 to 800. So we're going to bring it down a little bit. But I think 1.4 would be uh, adequate enough. So let's get started. Uh, Alright, so we got the red dot in the hopper here. And we're going to go ahead and uh, drop a charge in. And weigh it out in our uh, RCBS 750 uh, Range Master. Drop into the scale. Let's zero it out. Alright, 1.4. I think we got a, we got a set now. So let's go and start loading up these... Uh, 32 Smith Wesson shorts. Not bad at all. Crimp seems to be pretty good on it. I just adjusted the crimp just a little bit more. But I think it's good enough. Yeah, it's, it's tapered pretty good. A little bit more than a taper, but not quite a roll crimp. Beautiful. Alright, All right, the first loaded round. I like seeing them uh, primers uh, single. And, and you know, it's it's not necessary to, uh, you know, make a mass production as quickly as possible. I take my time because I enjoy what I do. All right. And most of the brass um, that I'm using is actually uh, once fired. Remings and Peters brass once fired. These are actually twice fired now. Going on third. Size. Prime. You want to charge? One at a time, slowly as she goes. I tell you what, uh, guys, uh, cleaning your shells before loading them, I mean, it just enhances the uh, looks and, uh, you know, basically the cosmetics of the uh, cartridges. I mean, it doesn't take any much effort to uh, wet to tumble the uh, the shells. You get, you get pristine cleaning. Uh, you just look inside there, it's just clean as a whistle. You would never think it was fire. It looks like uh, brand new breasts. I know a lot of you reloaders use single stage. You might even use brands like, uh, besides Lee, you know, I have a Dillon 550B as well. And uh, I use that for uh, 9mm, 357. But uh, you can't go wrong with a single stage press every time. Single stage, it's just a little error to be made, you know. If you're just making ammo for yourself only, no need to uh, be in too big of a hurry to make as many as you need. Just, you know, a couple hours of uh, spare time. Now these little shells can be finicky in these little machines and uh, the reason for that is because they are so small, they're prone to um, be, you know, kind of sit cockeyed a little bit. So you got to kind of watch to make sure that uh, each step the shell goes in straight. One small... Uh, move and you know you can go from a uh, perfectly good shell to a crushed or damaged shell you know some of the longer shells and bigger shells are a little more forgiving I've never had crushed any of the uh, larger calibers even 9 millimeter I've had crushed a few of these uh, 32 uh, long and shorts guys one more thing I want to mention too when you're reloading small little shells like these uh, 32's um, once you get the powder inside on a, on a turret press like this, uh, when you rotate it to the uh, seating stage, you know, make sure your finger is over uh, the open shell case so that you don't spill any powder. Because uh, once it stuffs, it stuffs abruptly and it vibrates and shakes and a few kernels come out of it. Uh, so uh, it helps to kind of like, you know, keep it covered. This way, you know, it stays steady, it doesn't fall out. And uh, 
you'll have less uh, powder mess on your table and on your uh, in your press itself to jam up the uh, the wheel works. Again, once we finish uh, making these uh, rounds, we're gonna take the last round, dump it into the um, scale, and check to see if the uh, weight is the same. So, for this uh, particular uh, uh, charge of 1.4 uh, grains, we're gonna check it at the uh, end to make sure that it stays at 1.4. So at least we know that the charges are consistent. One at a time, you know, these itty bitty little pop gun shells. <laughs> you know, I bet during its day though, from 1878, uh, even before that, you know, just after the Civil War when they had the uh, Smith & Wesson uh, Model 2, or I believe it was Model 1 and a half, where it was a 32 rimfire, they probably had the same ballistics. And, uh, you know, some of the officers carried them. They bought their own guns, but they, uh, carry them themselves. They were able to draw their weapon and fire five to six shots at an adversary, you know, and come out victorious on it. Oh, by the way, it's morning and uh, drinking my coffee. Uh, the previous part of the video you saw was the day before. The little lady and I, uh, well, <laughs> little lady she just said she wanted to go with me uh, on 4th of July back to Los Altos Good Gun Club and do a 4th of July shoot together. Uh, every now and then, you know, she uh, she goes with me to the range, but for the most part, I go by myself. So I'm pretty much hooked on these uh, 32 calibers, you know, uh, regardless whether it's the short or the uh, 327 Feral Magnum. I haven't fired any of the uh, mag Magnum cartridges yet because uh, the, uh, the ammunition is hard to get, and uh, I could order components for it. But uh, since I already had the mold already, I wanted to uh, do a test fire with the uh, lead bullets. And, uh, you know, I really did have a lot of fun shooting the lead bullets. And um, with the uh, 327 Magnum, I would like to shoot heavier bullets like the 115 and 120 grain. Uh, you know, going maybe 1,200 feet per second. be kind of cool. See what the hoopla is all about. Apparently... You know, it could take down uh, medium game, and uh, apparently it's been tested, and, and uh, some people have uh, testified that they have uh, killed wild pig, uh, deers, animals uh, such as that, with a 32 caliber. And you know, and I, and you know, back in the days of the 32 uh, 20 center fire, uh, they used them for hunting. And they use them in lever action rifles. They had some that were a single shot as well. They were mostly a uh, cap and ball squirrel gun, I guess you can call them. And people hunted squirrels with them. With a little, uh, basically a buckshot ball and powder, probably 20 grains of powder in a muzzle loader. And, uh, you know, people put meat on the table with those uh, rifles. And so, having a, a rifle, or basically a gun in the uh, Old West, or the days of uh, before statehoods, you know, it was necessary to have it. It was a tool of survival. You just couldn't uh, rush out to your local Piggly Wiggly or your Safeway, you know, and get meat. You pretty much had to harvest it yourself. You grew your own vegetables. Uh, matter of fact, that's what I'm doing now. As a matter of fact, I've been uh, growing tomatoes. So far, I've harvested two, two big tomatoes. And I tell you what, <laughs> you notice the difference right away. You take a, a store-bought tomato, and you take the ones off your, uh, your garden, and it's just bright red. It's just a red tomato. The aroma is different, too. The taste is totally different. Now, of course, you know, tomatoes are bland, so you're going to pretty much have to... Uh, uh, add flavor to them, mostly salt and pepper. But in my case here, I use the tomatoes for um, making homemade tomato sauce. And I did that yesterday, as a matter of fact, with some 93% uh, uh, lean ground beef, onions, you know, and some uh, spaghetti powder. They came out quite good. 
I really like Alfredo, but you know, it's quite fattening. Um, there's no tomatoes in it actually, it's mostly cheese and milk and uh, fettuccine noodles. Alright, and we have our scale set at zero. We'll put our last charge in and let's see what we get. Wow. I'm just okay, so we finished uh, wrapping up our reloading. Uh, I have 100, um, 32 minutes of less than long, and uh, these are with 3.1 grains of uh, Unique. Uh, it seemed like it uh, worked for me at the last session, so I'll stick with this cal uh, load. Uh, the second one we have is the uh, 100 rounds of uh, uh, Smith & Wesson uh, shorts, and uh, these here are loaded with uh, 1.4 grains of Red Dot, and I backed off the charge from the original 1.7, I was getting those high velocities, you know, from the last shoot I had from anywhere from 750 to 800, which I thought was kind of fast. But even though it didn't show pressure signs, I kind of wanted to keep it in the 600 feet per second round. So I think 1.4 should do it. Uh, now with the um, HP 38, uh, I was getting uh, 550, 580, 600 on the 1.6 uh, grains of uh, HP 38. So what I did was I bumped it up to uh, 1.7. To see if it'll give me a better uh, standard deviation and velocity, uh, keeping it up in the upper 590s to low 600s. So we'll just do that with that. So uh, our next trip is probably going to be uh, 4th of July. You know, the little woman wants to go with me, uh, and I think that's great because, uh, you know, this is the kind of uh, uh, sharing with couples, is, you know, I, I would, as I like because it's a, a hobby of mine. So, uh, you know, to have her come with me is, uh, is kind of like, you know, a treat because, you know, the more she uh, shoots with me, the more she understands my needs for as far as uh, shooting and reloading. So, uh, uh, anyways, guys, I want to thank you for joining me today. This is Lead Bolts for Life. Enjoy the rest of the week. We'll talk to you soon. Be safe out there. Bye for now.